live here on Facebook also. And there is uh, Bogdan. Bogdan just entered. Let's see if Hello. Yes, yeah, just a request for Bogdan. Send a request for Bogdan to join us here on Instagram and uh, on Facebook. As soon as we get people on Facebook, I'll make sure to welcome them and they can write their comments. And for you that are joining on Instagram, uh, we will be talking today about mental health and about uh, healing stories. So if you have a question, a situation, a comment about this uh, topic and uh, stories that we tell ourselves that may be injuring us, that might be harmful, uh, please share. And um, we'll be addressing, if possible, live. If not, we'll get a private reply back to you, okay? And the same to you, people watching here on Facebook. Please uh, share your comments, your questions, put, uh, share a situation, and we'll do our best to accommodate an answer here. And uh, yes, this is the 13th episode of Greenlight Other Choice lives and podcasts, talks about the human experience and savoring life with more simplicity. And today, I have the pleasure of having my friend, psychiatrist, NLP and hypnosis trainer, Bogdan Matei. Did I say it uh, correctly, Bogdan? Uh, yes. Let me see if... Uh, Thank you. I'm not seeing yet, I'm not seeing yet, Bogdan, you on Instagram. Uh, see if you get a request from my side to join, to join, oh, it seems now there's, oh, here you are on Instagram also, awesome. And uh, Bogdan, as I was saying, uh, he has been uh, doing amazing work with uh, remarkable results, uh, studying and testing communication and influence. And uh, he has been balancing conscious and unconscious work, uh, integrating them for you to get uh, increasingly a flexible and effective behavior that will, of course, help you to experience uh, life in those different situations, in those different moments, especially when things are a little bit different, at least, from um, what you would expect or from what you will desire. And um, I don't know about you listening now uh, or later when this uh, audio turns into a podcast, but I've been told stories all my life since I was born. And I've also been telling stories to other people. And this has been my, my experience, uh, witnessing people telling stories to each other, telling stories to themselves. Sometimes these stories limit us. Other times they enable us. And uh, before we go there uh, and to explore the question, how can we heal and change? Uh, I would like to first, uh, uh, because Bogdan is doing uh, amazing work, um, and uh, I believe, uh, Ro uh, Bogdan, you have been doing work in France, Italy, Romania, and I'm not sure if uh, anywhere else. Uh, so later on, we'll discover about that. But for the past 10 years, you have been uh, integrating and growing with your experience. Uh, I'm just curious uh, enough to ask, how did you end up doing what you are doing today? It was like, was there a calling that you felt or heard to start working as a psychiatrist? What is the, the early motivation for you to start to doing what you are doing? Hello, everybody. First of all, I want to say that I was hearing you talk. And um, as you said, the word, word flexible mm. i adjusted myself right i, I adjusted and i oh right. and i said mm, and i said i'm i'm very suggestible <laughs> so you, mm. you are talking about uh, mm -hmm. how i do work with uh, the conscious and the unconscious and how i make a, a work towards a balance between the two um, that would lead to more flexibility mm -hmm. I said okay I, I am there. So lead the way, uh, Joao, uh, into a deep trance, because Ooh. this apparently is what we are going to talk about, right? Um, how I've started, 
Well, there are so many stories about how I started. Which one do you want? Uh, so I, I, I imagine that th there's one that takes like a week to tell. Uh, do you have like a short version of that? Like, uh, what will be the version of uh, five, ten minutes? How did you start it? I mean, you were in high school at some point, I imagine. I don't know. I imagine. And, <laughs> I, I was there. <laughs> in in high school, what were what were your interests? What were your what was your motivation in high school before you enter uh, college? In high in high school. I always had as an interest psychology. Mm -hmm. Even from the ninth grade, I remember I was going to the psychologist um, mm -hmm. office and we were discussing different cases about different uh, kids in the school and uh, different families. And she gave me a lot of, <laughs> she was based on psychoanalysis and she gave me a lot of Freud uh, to mm -hmm. read mm -hmm. and uh, in the beginning I, I really had developed this great facility in interpreting a lot of the behaviors that people would come into to my practice a couple of years later and even though uh, the the theory sounded great even though there are there are some uses to the psychoanalysis, mm -hmm. telling people about uh, about all the the psychoanalytic intricacies didn't seem to to help. So um, I looked into other schools: behavioral cognitive therapy, transactional analysis, uh, NLP, and mm -hmm. hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, I decided to go into psychiatry even from the ninth, ninth grade, even though my parents were like, no, no way. Um, <laughs> Your parents I, I, were telling you a story to not go down that road. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I could understand their stories. I, I could understand their fears about losing mm. my mind and mm. also i enjoy a challenge i enjoy mm -hmm. walking in a in, in a world and looking at all those impossible patients that are there for 10 to 20 to 30 years mm -hmm. uh, i'm not saying that i solved all the cases that i uh, encountered of course but I'm working from a sense of curiosity. I, I want to know what is possible, mm. not from others' opinions, but because mm. I look into it. I uh, apply certain techniques or I'm being present in, in such a way that is um, honest, true to, to who I am. And at that moment, if uh, it works, it works. If it doesn't, I do something else. Mm -hmm. And I, I do, I do have stories about people that were thought to be impossible, or mm. you know, um, he's going to be quote unquote a vegetable vegetable all his life. And right, I was, I was looking, I was looking in the bed, and with my calibration skills, I would see no vegetable. Okay. But I would see a person that would be touched very deeply by the mm -hmm. words that that doctor would use, right? Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I would say to myself, not to the teacher, who the fuck made you God? Right? Can we swear on your uh, podcast? <laughs> Or it's too late uh, right now. Uh, it's too late, but uh, after we did, so, I, I guess he can. I guess he can. So, but we basically we understand the feeling, right? Is that moment mm. when someone uh, believes that knows the story uh, not yet written about uh, another person? Mm. Yeah, I I work from um, 
an assumption mm -hmm. that the story I'm encountering in psychiatry mm -hmm. are unfinished stories that are looping over and over, focusing on the same kind of things. Okay. Right. That um, get them and keep them stuck. Mm. And at that moment, my curiosity is um, leading me into finding out more about how they do that. How is it possible to mm -hmm. stay like this? Like, and I'm asking this because I'm I'm getting I'm I'm bored easily, right? My mind needs stimulation, <laughs> right? right. Like Sherlock. And I asked them, how how do you wake up in the morning and go back into the same thinking pattern, into mm -hmm. the same uh, behaviors, into the same decisions? Mm -hmm. And it's it's an interesting thing when I'm asking this question, because what happens is they have a set uh, frame about what a psychiatrist can do and will do during the meeting, and they will project that to every psychiatrist that comes their way. So. I'm supposed to ask about their treatment, if that is going well, um, mm -hmm. about certain symptoms that they had in the past, and mm -hmm. that's about it. I adjust the treatment. Right. Well, my approach is that I want, as I said, to dive into that story that they hold true for themselves, um, and also into finding a way together on expanding that story. Mm. Sometimes sometimes I do it subtly, covertly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, they want to be active participants in that, in that process. So they ask me, I, I want to know what you're doing. Oh, and they, okay. want, they want insight. Mm. Now there's a they, there's a famous quote about uh, about insight and behavior um, told by Milton Erickson, the great mm -hmm. um, psychiatrist, um, hypnotherapist. Said insight would lead to to change, um, not as often as behave changing the behavior will do, right? So mm -hmm. shifting the behavior will lead to, to that insight more readily than the, the insight itself. Mm. And um, I, I understand their need to know about, to be educated, and I, I love that. Because mm -hmm. when they, when they, are, um, when they are, have that mindset, mm -hmm. it's easy. It's, it's comfortable, and it's, it's a pleasure working like this mm. there are some in psychiatry right there are also cases where people don't want to be there but mm. they are forced by law because their um, destructive behavior mm -hmm. would have negative consequences for them and for the others and at this moment, they are coerced in being there. Mm -hmm. Now the job is more difficult mm -hmm. because the first thing that needs to happen for anything else to, to continue is rapport. Is that person to know that I have their best interest in mind and that mm -hmm we can we can work together mm -hmm. and it, it implies a lot of other things their their awareness into into what happened into their behavior into the, their decision making uh, into their the the choices that they, they are making that they are uh, that are leading them towards the same um, results so yeah it it is more difficult I, w I wouldn't say difficult, more challenging. Right. I, I like I like that it is. So, um, 
um, just today I, I had a patient who mm -hmm. was terrified in coming coming to see me because she, oh. she changed how many psychiatrists oh. and every oh. psychiatrist would ask her to go into her history and to her past and re retell the story so that the psychiatry psychiatrist would have um, an, an understanding of why she's there and she was horrified with the idea that she had to come yet to another psychiatrist again tell her her story again go through the same same uh, ordeals that um, she she went through in in, in the past mm -hmm. and she was like that oh wow i said because at some point you you begin to create an intuition about certain patients about the the signs mm -hmm. they are showing you Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm like the fifth psychiatrist you've seen in the last six months, right? And she said, yeah. And you are probably horrified with the thought that you have to go back into your history, retell everything. Yeah. And she said, yeah. I said, but I'm not going to ask you that. And she looked at me and said, hmm, no. I said, no, I'm not. Because I believe something. I believe that the past is not prologue for the future. Can, can, and, we, can we have that sink in into whoever is watching and listening to us? Because, let me just jump in just for many people that I know live their lives with that story with that belief that the past is the prologue for the future and that's amazing you saying that and uh, what happened next mm. and i said i'm going to ask you mm. what are you expecting from this collaboration what are you expecting from this hospitalization mm -hmm. so that when you get out of of the hospital yeah. you know that uh, five days seven days ten days however many days um, we decide for you to stay were mm -hmm. worth it and you um, learned what you needed to learn to move further in your life mm -hmm. And again, that expectation that the psychiatrist will ask certain types of questions and that expectation that, um, you know, he's going to ask me about the past, about my family, uh, yeah. wasn't met. It interrupts a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. And I saw her breathing and I said, okay, breathe with me. And we, we did some exercise in breathing. and because I've read your file, right? I, I know why you are here. And I mm -hmm. explain what was happening and why she was there. And um, basically I um, shared my knowledge into her history. N not right. the, the, the history that she didn't want to talk about, but the, the diagnosis that my colleagues put mm -hmm. um, and as we continue to breathe as we continue to develop that state in which she had to make sense of what is happening where am I how, how come this psychiatry is, is one of those who are approaching whatever this is mm -hmm. differently and I began telling stories. I began telling a story about, um, because the, the history with this lady is, is that she, ha she, she used to have panic attacks, which were so um, severe mm. that she would have to 
do certain rituals that she would have to uh, turn off the lights and really you know hide herself from herself so that she can cope with that tension in her in her uh, mind um, and I told her a story I said you know I had once um, a patient I was a medical student and this patient um, they I, I saw him in um, in the car car cardiology ward mm -hmm. and this guy had an amazing an amazing memory he could tell me with precision what he was doing and what he was thinking and what yeah. uh, his behavior was 10 20 30 years um, prior to his hospitalization and I and I said to him wow how how can you can you remember all these kind of things he shared with me a strategy every night before he uh, went to sleep mm -hmm. he would see the 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 movie of his day he put it on on the on a screen every single thing he did during that day and um but in a way where he was a spectator he was detached for from any event that happened during that day mm -hmm. because he wanted to have an objective view on what right. was happening of course what i'm what, what am i doing here i'm inviting the patient to begin to have another position mm -hmm. to dissociate as we to, we call yeah, it yeah exactly to to step back and have a different per perceptual position yeah. on and the events of her life by doing and that this, you're helping to make a space between the emotions and the, the experiential practical daily stuff and the stories that come from there and the, having the distance the space to oh look at that person going through the day like that and with that space mm. comes choice and with mm. choice comes an expansion of, of the of, of the awareness mm -hmm. and she was she was so focused on what i i was saying that she would lean towards me and mm -hmm. she would absorb every word i was saying mm -hmm. of course as i continued with my story my tonality would shift the mm. tempo would also drop. That's right. No. That's right. And I know what you are she, doing. She, she, she was so, she was so curious of to course. find out more. Yeah. That she was there, and at at some point, I interrupted the story mm -hmm. to to ask her a question. I said. Mm. Now, become aware of what you're feeling right now. Okay. The way you breathe, how you hold your body, how you're looking at me, how mm. you're being present with me here. You're feeling good, right? There are no racing thoughts. There are no fears that people are judging you. Mm. Even though you know me, what, 10 minutes, 15 right. minutes, and all of that, is gone and now as you're listening to me right now mm -hmm. you're able to become aware and at the same time remember remember this state remember this breathing remember how your heart beats remember how your and i went through you know, remember the muscles around your eyes. Remember the, mus the, the sensations of the muscles around your mouth. Yeah. And she was, yeah, yeah. And you know what? At the end of the session, I said, you know mm -hmm. what? All of these learnings you are going to take with you back home. Yeah. And you are going to go through the, all these exercises 
knowing that you can because look you now are showing me that you are capable of all these things and i trust you and she went yeah yeah and she said i trust me and that was beautiful i said good it is better than you trusting me when you trust yourself knowing that you can and will allow yourself to feel that more deeply and more profoundly with each step you take towards your house <sighs> and she looked at me and said she said okay i i accept and i begin to laugh said you accept what I accept exactly. you to be my psychiatrist. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she was she was waiting to make that decision. Awesome, beautiful yeah. story, and beautiful example about. Uh, uh, sometimes people uh, really uh, uh, get um, yeah stuck with these ideas. Uh, for example, the the preconception, the the um, social imaginary about the psychiatrist, but it could be about. I don't know, uh, a baker, it could be about the, 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 the laundry people, it could be uh, about the coach, it could be about, uh, you know, a CEO, whatever it is. And, mm. um, oh, we have Chiara saying, uh, great. <laughs> and um, <Hey. laughs> people yeah. interact in their days with those notions. They are expecting that that person, because it has that kind of uh, job, to uh, act, react, talk, so on and so on, mm -hmm. from that place. And uh, like you were inviting and sharing, when we break that pattern, when we put that story on hold, and we give another example, give another story, give another suggestion about what can it be, and how can it happen, uh, people take into consideration uh, and appreciate uh, the connection, the rapport, uh, feeling that um, we are there present with them, for them, instead of being just of more of the same, uh, mm. more of like a, a same formula for everyone, you know? Um, and when people, when people have that uh, um, st uh, different story being uh, shared with them, uh, they find other ways to cope. They find other ways to think about or to have a perspective about uh, about what's what's happening. And that was that. Just a quick sharing before I ask you. Uh, it reminded me a story about Ericsson, uh, Milton Ericsson, when uh, I believe he had he had the, the first polio crisis when he was seventeen as far as I remember from what I've read. And uh, yeah, it was on the hospital bed and uh, he heard two doctors uh, telling uh, his mother that he will not make it through the night. He will be dead in the morning. And he was like, so infuriated, like raging and how dare they telling how, and telling that to a mother, telling to, to a mother that she's gonna lose her son. And uh, as the conversation outside uh, ended, uh, his mother came into the room and was like, I don't know what they told you and I don't care. Help me move that furniture. So he, he, had, he, had, he had his mother like for 15, 20 minutes or more, I don't know, uh, moving, um, I don't know the, the specific in English, but a, a, forn a furniture uh, uh, piece in the, in the room away from the window so he could see the sunset and uh, after a long while uh, he got uh, this his mother got uh, the job done and he could see a partial uh, sunset and then he blacked out and was unconscious for three days hmm. and then he woke up and then yeah we all know many stories about it but he lived uh in, 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 i he lived until he was 80, I don't know, he, he died in 1980 or 1981, around that. 
uh, so way more than 17. And that reminds me, um, he had a strong, strong uh, inner notion and practice about taking care of himself and setting a filter, setting a filter from whatever he hears, whatever comes from the outside that might be harmful or put or put in, or might prejudice or might put into cause uh, his health and well-being. Uh, he had that from a early age, and um, with that story that you told about that woman, uh, what is uh, what is your experience? How do you feel about uh, people creating filters for stories and for the experience with the world? I have a mentor, a Dr. Mm -hmm. Joseph Reggio, mm -hmm. who has a, a great expression. It says, holding the space for someone until they can hold it for themselves. And this moment, so holding the space for someone mm -hmm. until they can hold that space for themselves. Mm. At this moment, your decision-making processes, your perceptions are based on possibility, right? Mm -hmm. On the desired state. You are holding for them what they come into you for, mm. right? They are not yet capable of holding that space for themselves. Right. And when you're holding that for them, uh, assuming that you've gone through all the, you know, the... Um, the questions about ecology and the, mm -hmm. that goal or that intention is specifically um, is specified in positive terms and all, all that uh, beautiful um, poems about uh, NLP setting, <laughs> setting goals. Yeah. At that, at that moment, the, I would say you don't much need a filter. Okay. because you're working within that space and that's that space mm -hmm. is ecological because you you've assured that it is okay. now about filters mm -hmm. whew, i would uh, <laughs> working in psychiatry mm. there is a great necessity in mm -hmm doing this kind of work and some people call it filtering uh, some people call it uh, have having a an empathic distance that allows you to mm -hmm. um, act as an agent of change mm -hmm. without taking the patient home with you right right the the, the heavy load of all the yeah. sadness or all the illness that uh, a doctor can see in a hospital mm. at that moment um and what is this filter a sensitivity to your own body exactly. I, I i know that myself i am guilty of pushing mm. my 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 body and my myself beyond some limits that were healthy I remember last year, I, I worked from April uh, to October, mm. almost without stopping. Wow. I would have, um, I would work even uh, in, in the weekends. At the end of these six months of hard working, mm. my body said, stop, stop. And the way it told me to stop is that I, I, I got COVID, but okay. very nasty COVID. Oh. And um, I, I stopped the, the activity. Mm -hmm. Of course, I went uh, into hiding, into isolation. Yeah. And... Um, it, it wasn't too late. It's never too late to listen to your unconscious mind. But at, at that moment, 
I really listened to it. I I was in bed for about five days straight. I couldn't count days. I, I, I wasn't aware of anything. Mm -hmm. And um, the um, the hypnosis, because the the topic is healing stories, right? Right. The the healing experience or the healing intervention was actually done by by my son. I was hiding in my I was hiding in my uh, bedroom, mm -hmm. and I would refuse to see anybody, right? Because I, I didn't I didn't yet know that I had COVID. I had to, to oh. test myself, but I couldn't test myself because I was mm. very, very sick. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want them to come in and I, I was in hiding, right? Of course. And um, at some point after three days of trembling, I, I'm sweating and mm. uh, right, my son comes into the room and I was in, in, a, in a bad shape, really bad shape. And I said, please go out, let, let, me, let me be. Mm. And I was, I was afraid. I didn't, I, we don't know how this uh, can, can, what this can do to, to, to a child or, mm -hmm. and I, I said, go, let me, uh, daddy is working through something right now. I will mm -hmm. be, I will be fine. Mm -hmm. And I said that to him once more. I said, go out. And he looked at me and said, no, I want to be here with you. I oh. want to. to... And at, 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 some, at some point, uh, I went into uh, the bath uh, to have a bath. I was, I was so cold. I was shivering and Mm -hmm. And he came after me, mm -hmm. and I, I was in the bath, and he enters, and he began to put some some shower gel in his hand, to rub them together, and begin to um, wash me. Mm -hmm. Right at that moment, everything stopped. I could feel his hands on on my back, his encouragement. He said. Mm -hmm. Everything will be all right. Everything will be okay. And the NLP NLP practitioner in me said, "How do you know?" And he looked <laughs> at me. And said, I just know. Everything yeah. will be all right. I just. Know. And he continued to wash me. He gave me a towel. Mm. He put me to bed. Right. <laughs> he's, he's six years old. Exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. And at that moment, my mm. focus shifted from all the pain, from all the trembling, from all that yeah. to his voice in my head, mm -hmm. to his, to his um, little hand on my, on my shoulders, to his little hand supporting me to, yeah. to the, on the way to, to the bed. I said, this is it. This is life. This is healing. At that moment, of course, I was still sick, but my focus was mm -hmm. heading into a, a different direction. My focus shifted at that moment. I mm -hmm. said, wow, I want to keep this. And I said to myself at that moment, remember that, Bogdan. Mm -hmm. Keep that with you deeper and deeper. And the next morning, mm -hmm. I promised you I felt fine and i had to tell him you know what you were right everything will be okay yeah everything is going to be all right and he looks at me and says i know that i know <laughs> i know so yeah yeah this is this is an experience of mm -hmm. of healing of it, it was for me and now that I, I, I share it with you and your listeners, mm -hmm. I hope it brings something up in, from their unconscious, right? 
because it's it's nothing more but a, a shift in attention. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm amazed though, uh, as I, if I understood correctly, you said that everything stopped. Uh, I mean, the shivering and the, the, the body sensations that you were feeling uh, before entering the, the bath. And then uh, at that moment, yeah, that's just, just amazing. You know the, more um, than that, more than that. Yeah. Time stopped. It was like the notion only of that. Time. It was only that sensation mm. on my body, mm -hmm. the, the, the what I could see in front of me, mm -hmm. his sense of security and stability, mm -hmm. his look, him looking at me and said, he's going to be all right, echoed throughout all my body, throughout right. all my cells. Amazing. That like is, a, yeah. Like a recognition. A, re a resonation with uh, what he said. Mm -hmm. Well, so I can now, because, now, now well, that becomes a healing story, right? My experience right. becomes right. that healing story. I invite people to notice things that are important for them, things that matter. And th there's a interesting another story <laughs> talking about <laughs> stories. Exactly. Um, in a in a seminar in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, one participant came up to me in tears, and she looked at me after everyone uh, had gone to eat, and she said, "Doctor Matei, mm. please tell me who am I?" Oh wow! And I said. Okay, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's the um, question, right? That's the big question. And, and um, mm. I asked, well, how, how, how do you want me to answer to that? Really, how do you want me to answer? I said, mm -hmm. you're the psychiatrist. You have to know the answer to this. And I said, okay, before I answer that question, would you do something for me? And she said, yes. Would you, would you please walk like this? And I, 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 this, I did like a very strange walk. Right? And because we agreed that she's going to do what I, right. I said. We were, going to we, were in your instructions. we were in rapport. And she, 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 went, she went like this. It was very uncomfortable for her to, to walk like this. Yeah. And then I asked her, okay, now, please, how, how, how does it feel? Ah, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. What do you mean? Mm. It doesn't feel like me, right? So, okay, okay, okay. Right. Can, 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 you, can you walk like this? And, and, and again, I, I did another strange, uncomfortable walk. Mm. Um, again, a, laughing. Can you laugh like this? <laughs> and as she looked at me and said, Hey, you said you'd do it. I said, Okay. Okay. And she did it. <laughs> and it was very, very uncomfortable, right? Mm. And she didn't see the point of all these strange exercises. She, she couldn't understand why, why are you telling me to do all, all these things? And I, I asked her, how, how are these things uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. I said, because it's not me. I said, okay. And I, I turned the question, who are you? And at that moment, she went. That's right. That's right. You don't need my labels. You don't need my interpretation of judgment or evaluations. What you did right there is mm -hmm. now again, how will you remember that now and forevermore? And she went like, wow. Like when you're looking at that person you love, 
can do you imagine that the way you look at them and what you see and how you feel your body and how you love them is unique only to you to you it's yeah now what am i doing i'm call, calling or shifting her attention towards those things that she can do mm -hmm. in, in her behavior those she movements, can those sensations that's right that's right and uh, did, did she came up uh, did she said anything afterwards more than I don't know she, she could have like uh, the, the the secret of the universe or she could have uh, an epiphany <laughs> I don't know but that's amazing that and people uh, that I know um, also forget that they for, forget to breathe and connect with themselves in that exact same way um, just uh, the other day I was helping um, a woman like 50 somethings uh, because she was having a uh, high anxiety attacks just uh, or only uh, while driving so in, in the specific spots she will be driving and uh, of course now she already she or she's already at a place that uh, she knows that she will pass that spot so he, she starts to anticipate the anxiety attack and um, what's uh, what has been happening uh, or what was happening uh, is that uh, the mix of unconscious conscious decision is to stop the car and pull over uh, in a safe way uh, and then she re resumes driving and after a, a mile or so she will pull and stop again and uh, then on the next session the next conversation uh, we were uh, chatting and uh, she said a little bit about uh, uh, her week and her, her daily routines and uh, she will like be jumping from one task to another and she will be complaining that people will be calling on their mobile uh, at times that it would not uh, be supposed that they will call though. like they will call at 10 at uh, 10 p.m or something like that and she was showing a little bit uh, uh, people should not be doing this and uh, i should be not uh, I, sh I should not uh, take the call but then i answer the call and then uh, 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 and then even my son this or that person that uh, 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 like oh interesting so tell me more about uh, how you use your time and when you find time for yourself for example oh <laughs> I, I usually don't uh, just recently when the, this lockdown started that I had like 20 minutes at night at most for a little bit of reading but then I'm so tired that I go to sleep yeah sure of course yeah and just to myself for a while I was like how interesting is this uh, this uh, message if you want to see it as a message that the body is uh, showing to her about uh, the need to stop the need to pull over have a stop have a rest and then you can then you can continue uh, but i can only speculate that uh, it it was like a emergency kind of thing to come up with uh, as an anxiety attack but uh, just just uh, a speculation but it was interesting enough to see uh, to know a little bit more about the context and about the ways that the the body was getting creative in getting her attention and finding a way for for her to stop and that that also brings me to uh, we have been talking about it but i, I will still like like uh, explicit um, uh, for us to address it explicitly uh, we are talking about the notion and stories and the uh, uh, preconceived ideas that people might have about uh, jobs and other people and so on for example the psychiatrist uh, what will be your perspective about uh, the work that you do that you do about mental health and about uh, for example um what will be a, a story that people usually tell themselves 
that turns out to have a limiting impact, that turns out to be harmful in some ways. There are uh, there are a lot of stories that are mm -hmm. out of their conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. They don't know they are to some extent editing and creating those stories and mm -hmm. leaving them at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what you're asking is what specifically? So well, I guess on one side is your perspective about mental health. Uh, because you said before that usually, or at least some people, uh, go to a psychiatrist or go to a, a place where they get a health professional to, um, to help them. And they are expecting some uh, actions and some words. Like you said before, something like uh, they, they might... Um, uh, do a diagnostic, they might read uh, uh, some information and they might do, do this or change the prescription or tell me to go and do some meditation or tell me to go and do X, Y, Z. But that's not working or I don't see myself doing that. So, but essentially they got this preconceived story about uh, mental health. Um, and uh, you have been showing some examples and stories about other ways to address and to look at mental health, uh, including uh, the one when you said people, for some reason, they might not be able to hold the space for themselves, the space to make some decisions or to, uh, to come up with some solutions. And we are there to support them doing that and helping them to learn how to do it by themselves. Um, but I don't know, it just popped in my mind that you might have a, a different mental health uh, definition if we want. I don't know exactly if that's the, the expression. I have a lot of definitions, okay? Awesome. Uh, I, I, everything that I've read in psychology, psychiatry, mm -hmm helps me make a story out of my patient's story, right? And allows me also to continue that story. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there is a interesting thing about, you know, we talked about psychoanalysis. And uh, in psychoanalysis, there is a, such a thing called uh, defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And we are very intelli intelligent because when there is a trauma in our life we disconnect this is a way of protecting ourselves right. from the um, that whatever trauma is happening and we the extent to which we disconnect right mm -hmm. is how can i say this the extent of the pathology that you come into the psychiatric unit. At that yes. moment, you did the best thing you could do for you to detach, disconnect, uh, run away from, exactly. uh, prevent the deepening of, of that pain. Exactly. Some people uh, disconnect and become aloof, but mm. socially functioning. Mm -hmm. And some become so disconnected that they are no longer able to function. Mm -hmm. And the distance that they put between themselves and consensual re reality is so big mm -hmm. that they are, are out of touch, exactly. as the metaphor goes, with reality. Now, this is a story. This is... Um, an interpretation of mm -hmm. psychological mechanisms. Mm -hmm. We can take that story and run with it. And to the extent it is useful, you can build um, all sorts of strategies to, to work with your patients. Yeah. My view on, on mental health is psychoeducational. Those okay. patients would have needed at that, that those moment choice options to deal with that trauma and they didn't have one yeah enter the agent of change and choice and choice okay 
perfect perfect yeah but for me it's really clear what you're expressing and yeah i'm on board uh, i'm on board thank you for for expressing and sharing that exactly like uh, exactly that way uh, so just before we we are beginning to close uh, our conversation and just before that i would like you to of course there'll be one final question but be, before that um i don't know uh, i was writing on facebook and i, I didn't told you uh, but you noticed right uh, my mobile uh, by the the time you you told the story about your son helping you uh, my mobile what happened was he crashed and it resetted himself automatically <laughs> It, that was interesting and um, i was helping uh, i was helping i was asking people to share a comment or a, put a, a question that you might have about what you have been talking and if you have questions that you want to share uh, after this talk just reach out and uh, we'll do our best to reply privately to you and uh, bogdan will we have uh, like five minutes for some questions for your fast answer like the first thing that pops up in your mind. I know that it's one hour plus uh, where you are at, uh, in France, right? You are talking with us from, from France. And uh, I, I, I will give you some credit for all those people watching. Okay. Ricardo, uh, Ricardo, Joao has asked me since mm. March last year to come on his podcast. Basically. Since then, uh, I, I I put it off. Uh, of course, I was very busy. Like you said, um, yeah. And he didn't waver. He went on and okay. Do you have time right now? Do you have time in, in the month? Do you have time? So I think we schedule this talk maybe in November. Uh, maybe probably, in, yeah, around yeah, that. November. Yeah, yeah. So I congratulate you in your termination to and you having stuck with uh, your intention to have me on your call on your podcast and i thank you for that it uh, it teaches me a lot in terms of uh, motivation and determination and i i won't use any other nominalization because kathy pedro will faint and I, we yeah. don't want that <laughs> we we do not we we she's want very, to avoid the very, feedback about very, nominalizations. <laughs> yeah, she's very sensitive to yeah, nominalizations. Very sensitive. I, 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 I will I, I will leave it at that. Awesome. Uh, oh, and Chiari is saying a good story of perseverance. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of uh, is. Yeah. It kind of is. Yeah, and uh, I have I have more to share. So, so someday I will do. Um, a video just about my stories and uh, examples uh, another time. So, but yeah, I do appreciate you being here and you being also patient with me and also being here at this hour. And before we close, let's go up to like six, seven questions about this uh, for these fast answers. Okay. Mm. Uh, what um, what have you? What, what will be one thing that pops in your mind now uh, that you learned from your observation of? life of experience being present hmm. and and you know i was very fixed in this idea of knowing of showing that i know that i have the intellectual baggage too hmm. and i'm learning to be more humble. I, I'm, I'm not succeeding. I'm not saying that I'm succeeding. <laughs> but at least I have a direction. Awesome. In, uh, no longer identifying with my in intellect and begin mm -hmm. living a bit. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, just a brief, uh, I'm not sure if it was March or November. You said something that st is still with me and will continue to be with me from many years to come. You said something like, you know, years ago, I would say something like, from my wisdom, what I believe is X, Y, Z. But now I'm more humble and I would say, 
Well, from what I've been witnessing in my experience, it seems that it could be X or Y or Z. And uh, it, it, for me, it makes total, total sense. We can have a huge amount of knowledge, huge amount of information, and being present, like you just said, it could be really precious. And also, I've come to the conclusion that mm. in the past, I would love hearing myself talk. It, was, it would be my favorite hobby. Okay. Now, I love hearing other people talk because I know my stories. I know what I know. I don't okay. know what you know. And I would love to find out. Yeah. 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 I, I resonate with that. Uh, I, I love to hear people's stories and uh, how, how was it for them and how are they doing and how did they manage to do X, Y. Yeah, I really love that. So another one. Um, have you ever, and if yes, when, you stopped seeing yourself as a child? If, have we have I ever stopped, stopped seeing yourself as a kid? It it's more like a feel mm -hmm. of the kid. Right. Um, but again, my my son reminds me of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Tell me, do you see yourself the way that other people see you? Probably not. I'm just curious here. When was the last time that someone told you something about yourself? Unless, unless, unless I and look you into were a mirror. surprised. Unless, unless I look into a mirror. If I was surprised. Do you say you don't have a sense of humor? <laughs> I, I do have a sense of humor. Uh, but I keep it to myself. <laughs> I, I like my own jokes. Um, so, what when, was the question? When were you surprised by some someone telling you something about yourself? You, you see, surprise means that I, I would have some expectations of that person to tell a story mm. that I already decided upon. Mm. And I, I cannot say that I am surprised, but I enjoy hearing different mm -hmm. views and different perspective on me and my behavior. Mm -hmm. More on my behavior, on me. OK. okay. I, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> sure. Fair says, enough. Says, says he humbly. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And. Uh, if let's put it in hot quotes, superpower. Uh, if you have a superpower, uh, what will be the superpower that you would like to distribute to every person that you that you meet? Kindness, kindness, wow. and awareness. Wow, and love. Yeah, I. I'll, I will stop with the normalizations, but these are my favorite ones. <laughs> exactly. But it's for me at least, it's interesting enough that kindness is the one that most um, uh, most immediately I see an action for it. The an action of being kind with someone uh, is one of the most that I can come up with examples of, uh, of that the nominalization. Uh, but yeah, kindness, uh, I support that. Uh, I will help you to distribute that superpower around the world. And uh, j just one, um, uh, one more and then a final question. Uh, when uh, you look in a mirror, since you just mentioned looking yourself in a mirror, uh, what do you see in your eyes? I, I expected that question. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Without sounding pretentious, I have a good feeling when I look mm -hmm. into my eyes. I, um, I think kindness starts with me, for me, and then to all, all the others.
if I know how to be kind with myself, within myself, it would be easy peasy to, to do it with others. So um, one of, to answer your first question, the, the question we started this podcast, yeah. what got me into to psychiatry, mm. I couldn't understand the, the lack of kindness and the lack of okay. um, love that, you know, it would, it would appear strange for me when I would hear people saying that they they hated themselves and that they they have all this anger and they would they would wouldn't even look at themselves in the the mirror right mm -hmm. yeah and it it, it was a good lesson for me mm -hmm. because that's when i realized how do I look myself in the mirror, right? How, what do I see? What do I see in my eyes? And there, there is an exercise where you, you look into, into the mirror yeah. and you look deeply into your eyes and without judging. Without, exactly. Oh, you have, uh, oh, you've, you've put, uh, put on some weight or whatever I said in the beginning, right? Um, and, and to arrive at the point where you can say, I love you and mean it and not be embarrassed by that. To be, yeah. to be with that kindness and with that love in that present moment, to hold that space for yourself. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know what, how, how to call it, but um, I guess it was three or four, no, four or five years ago, uh, I spent like uh, two or three weeks doing that exercise. Oh, nice. uh, yeah, especially after an interesting event <laughs> when I, I, I lost, uh, yeah, I, I lost a little bit in my life. Um, I lost some things and uh, yeah, and I did that exercise afterwards and it was, wow, amazing, amazing. I really, re really helpful, and I really enjoyed it also. Uh, so, last question, last but last but not least, and since uh, uh, green light and green light other choices to help people to move forward, um, the question is: uh, if uh, you meet, uh, if you would meet a person, the person that is stuck is like uh, at the red light waiting. Uh, for the green light and she's waiting for to get the green light and uh, you will deliver you will share you will do something you will say something you will give your green light for the person to move forward uh, what would you say what would you do what will be your green light to give no milton erickson used to say that you have to invent um, psychotherapy for each and every patient, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It depends on the on the patient in front of me. And this is the beauty of what I'm doing, of psychiatry, of coaching, of mm -hmm. training, that I, I, I prepare a lot, reading, okay. listening to podcasts, listening to all of this, when I'm there, mm -hmm. I'm me and the patient. Mm. And what comes up, comes up. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. I also, you know, uh, I'm on that path. Uh, as I l hear you, what comes up in me is you will uh, be there present with the person and you'll somehow invite a person like show me your map show me your experience show me yourself and uh, for me that's what that was how i interpreted and for me that's beautiful like okay i'm here with you uh, let's see what's happening and where do you want to go what do you want to do next and so also grateful for you doing that Gr uh, thank you for sharing that and um, before you go, do you, do you have any last comment, uh, word, something that you want to share with our audience? 
keep on per persevering. Keep that determination and that high level, Joao. And thank you again for your invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, oh, just for you to jo that join now on uh, Facebook and on Instagram, we'll be closing our conversation here, but you can just go back to IGTV at greenlight.joao.pombeiro and you can look for this episode, the 13th episode of Greenlight Other Choice. And uh, Bogdan, where can people find you? Where, where can people connect with you online or offline? I don't know, how, how do you want to share it? I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, and now I'm on Instagram. <laughs> now, now, now you're also on Instagram. Yeah, now because of Kathy, I said, you have to, you have to, because of her. <laughs> Because of her, you joined Instagram. <laughs> how, how interesting is that? Uh, but yeah, so connect with Bogdan, Bogdan Matei. That would be uh, like, just like you are uh, seeing now here on Facebook and Instagram. Bogdan Matei on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. And you also have a website, Bogdan, that you want to share? Yeah, I think I have. I think I have one. You, you think you have a website? <laughs> I, I just I just love when when uh, um, when we are connecting like that. And Kiara is saying thank you, João Ricardo Pombeiro and Bogdan Mate. Thank you, Kiara, for being with us uh, up until this hour. And looking forward to connect with you again. And uh, for you at home and for you listening to this podcast later. Thank you very much for following. Uh, you can find me at Coach João pombeiro.com or greenlight.joão.pombeiro and Bogdan Matei at uh, LinkedIn, at Facebook and Instagram and uh, at the website that Bogdan believes he has. DrBogdanMatei.com Okay, awesome. It, it's apparently real, the website. So you go there now uh, and apparently. check. Apparently it's real. Go there now and check more of Bogdan's work and follow us, of course, if it's interesting and useful for you. And um, Good In Light, Other Choice will be back next week, that time in Portuguese. In English, we'll be back in two weeks' time. Looking forward to connect with you again. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Thank you very much.